Hello, beach friends. I have to admit, some beach walks are a little more memorable than others, and this for me is going to be a memorable one. We went to Cinnaba. We're at Blind Pass. I have not been here for a while, and I was really struggling on my way to Cinnaba to determine what beach should I go to. Should I go to Bowman? Should I go to Blind Pass? But I ended up picking up Blind Pass, and boy, am I glad I did. Now, hunting for seashells, sometimes it's like this. You kind of got to walk along, and you're in hunt mode. You're really kind of hunting to see what's around. And other times, treasures literally wash up in front of you. And that happened to me today, and I cannot wait to share it with you. So let's see what else is out there for us today, and let's go to the beach. So here we are at Blind Pass. It is early in the morning. That is the way I like to shell and it worked out for me. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So super early, I literally just got here. You do notice that the tide is going out. That is why I kind of timed my time at the beach here the way I did. Dead low, it's gonna be negative two at 9.03. Right now it's creeping on eight o'clock. So I have a bunch of time to kind of shell as the tide is going out and then a little bit of time as the tide is coming back in again. So that is the plan. And there's the shell pile here. I got a, a Florida fighting conch. That is a calico clam, but I don't want to spend too, too much time here. The shell piles will kind of be there. It's a couple of kitten paws and another a calico scallop. Is that a keeper? Oh, did you see the little horse conch in the back? And the little horse conch. We wouldn't want to miss that little horse conch. So we're going to deal with this shell pile maybe when we come back because I don't want to miss the low tide. And I'm like, what? 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 Are you kidding me? I just got here and this giant horse conch just washed up at my feet. I kind of saw something. I know on the camera, it doesn't look it's all that dark. It's really not that dark, but you can see better on film. I wasn't exactly sure. I look over, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. A giant horse gunk right there. Oh, it's awesome. It's got its tip. For all intent and purposes, it's intact. Seriously, are you kidding me? I think there was one other person in the parking lot and I, I probably got to the beach before them. Wow. So when I say you should go be the first one on the beach, this is one of the reasons why. Because the tide, again, it's going out. Someone would have got that shell eventually. I'm just glad it was me. All right, let's see what else we're going to find today. Heading out. So I'm at Blind Pass and I'm heading, uh, I guess technically, is it more east? South, I'm heading toward Bowman's Beach. So, oh, and the little bird is getting its breakfast. So I got myself quite a walk ahead of me. So here we're gonna see some escarpment. That's what you call when that sand is kind of been eroded away from where it should be on top. We're gonna see a little bit more of that. It's being kind of neat because it's stacked it shells, sand, shells, sand. But for now, Beautiful morning. We'll see a little bit blind pass. We're gonna march down to Bowman's or at least that way, see what we can find. All right, another chunk. So that's kind of how it happened, except mine happened to be the entire shell. So this is just a chunk that washed up and it's got all those pits in it because other critters kind of suck out the calcium. Everyone's, everyone likes that calcium. And so we'll see what else we can find. Now, I will admit, it's looking a little slim, looking a little flat. And if I'm not creeping along, it means there's not all that much. So if I, because I don't really scan that quickly, I kind of do take my time. So there's pretty much nothing here. Oh, except for this garbage, this copper tone maybe, and it was pretty much full. So I'm gonna take that off the beach. And I'm gonna take this little piece of plastic junk off the beach as well. 
So I did notice that there's really not a lot of shells here, but you know what else there's not? There's not a lot of bugs. And I did come prepared. I do have my Sea Anchored Secrets bug barrier. If you wanted to be prepared when you went to the beach, you'd go over to seaanchoredsecrets.com and you can use code SWF for $5 off your order. So I did not need my bug barrier today, but I am prepared. Now I am noticing I'm not really slowing down. I'm really, I'm charging up the beach and that might bum me out, except for the big horse I got in my shell bag. So yeah, I'm still in my shell high. Like it's gonna be the best day ever. I have this awesome shell in my bag and we're gonna see what else we're gonna find out here on Sanibel. Beach has changed a lot. And I'm kind of, it probably would be difficult at high tide because it's low tide right now. But I'm gonna pop up here real quick. It's a shell pile. It's, eh, you never know, you never know. I'm gonna grab a couple of these calico clams. Seems to be a good day for those. And then, yeah, just kind of do a little bit of a scan. This probably has been here a while and been picked over a couple of times, but I still managed to get two calico clams. So you never know never know what other people are hunting for. So still march on. Like I said, this probably would be difficult at high tide. But where there's a will, there is a way. So here's more of that escarpment. See with the shells and then the sand is on top of that. And then again, more shells and sand. So that's why people sometimes dig for shells. Maybe one day I'll kind of learn how to do that. I'm more of a low hanging fruit, walk, see, pick. That's kind of how I roll. This is quite a pile. And again, I'm kind of thinking, eh, this has probably been here a while. And once I really get down, this is what we're looking at. A couple of those kitten paws, a lot of those transverse arcs. All right, a, ooh, a very delicate jingle, oops. So a lot of the common things, crossbarred Venus clams. There is a couple of kitten paws peppered in there. Yep, there's one right there. So lots of the arcs. I do see a spiny jewel box probably worn down. Oh, I see a piece of a shark eye. Yeah, womp womp. <laughs> and oh, a cut ribbed arc. If that didn't have so many holes in it, I likely would collect that. So lots of shells, man. If you were coming for like craft shells, oh, forget about it. You could have cleaned up. But I'm more kind of like a specimen collector. Is that what I am? Oh, see that, that's what I'm looking for. So that is a colorful moon snail, also known as a gaudy nautica. Those I find very, very, very fun to collect. I just like looking at the different types of patterns they have. And this little paper fig, a light little thing. And it does have a little tiny hole in it and a giant Atlantic cockle. Oh, the interior is quite pretty, but it's chipped and that's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a no for me. So I'll keep looking. Oh, an egg cockle, darn it. It's also broken. All right, that's all right. So I'm kind of laying, there's not a lot down by the water. So I'm kind of going up in the higher rack line. Just again, just seeing what all I can find. And this appears to be a lump of a lightning whelk. And I know that because the aperture, the opening is on the left side of the shell. So the lightning whelks are one of the only two really substantial shells you can find. The other one is the horse conch. Here I happen to have one that I can show you. So the lightning whelk and the horse conch, if you're going to look for those big shells down here, you're looking for either that lightning whelk or that horse conch. Okay, here we have some sea pork, and that's initially what got me to bend down and check this out. And then I was, the pen shell is absolutely encrusted with barnacles. And that's what's going on here. It kind of was shimmering. It looked weird to me. I'm like, what is going on here? And I got a little closer, and that's because they're all alive. So all those little weird barnacles are alive. And I call them weird because what they do is they float around, and they glue their head onto a substrate, this it seems to be a shell for these guys. So they glue their head on there and then they have these legs that kind of have like feathery pieces on them and they kind of like filter feed with their legs. I know it's kind of weird. 
but these barnacles unfortunately probably aren't going to survive all that long because they do need again to filter feed they need that water and they're going to be dependent on whatever happens to that pen shell so you know, good luck barnacles not filter feeding not an easy business all right this is a jewel box this is a corrugate jewel box it's a little bit different than those spiny jewel boxes just kind of looks like wrinkled so yeah that that is a corrugate jewel box and a scallop calico scallop oh that's quite lovely is there something in the water here Mm. All right, well, visibility was fine. It's just, I, I'm suffering from just a flat out lack of shells. This is a common auger. Now it is broken on the bottom there, bummer, but we get a great look at that siphonal canal. Little critters kind of pop out and they breathe while still keeping their shells and the shells are protecting them. Oh, two more calico scallops, very nice. And this little fighting conch, gorgeous. And I should have known just by looking at that great color that, yeah, that's not just sand in there, that's the critter. So I try to give it a quick rinse. Nope, not gonna rinse the critter out. So there's a little tiny fighting conch snail in there. I really should have probably just known because that color was so vibrant. There you go, friend, I'll leave that No. Live collecting. Any, anytime there's anything living, that stays at the beach. So we have a yellow prickly cockle and another calico scallop. So some nice yellow and orange coloring. And a juvenile, and it is only a shell this time. That is a juvenile fighting conch. Yeah, that's a nice looking shell. A little banded tulip. Yep. One of those cinctura hunteria shells and kitten paw found one of those already so there are absolutely shells here just not i mean you notice there's a lot of shell. i can start naming some so we haven't picked up yet that's a rough scallop Arr. little little wing on the bottom is missing on the left but still a pretty shell a day like today i'm keeping that oh a chestnut turban yeah, it's fine. That's a good looking shell. A little chestnut turban. All right, at least there appears to be something down here. Let's see what we got. A yellow common jingle, also known as a baby's foot. Lovely. go for that other oh it's broken so i'm not going to keep that that's a calico clam and a little drill of some sort yeah it's a little rounded i'm not gonna know and a banded tulip so normally i wouldn't keep those i don't know i guess i decided that wabi sabi was going to take over and just those little imperfections were going to be just okay so we have another banded tulip, a orange one with the orange lines, a couple of fighting conks. Oh, look how zigzaggy that one is. So here is a Florida fighting conch. Now the, the spikes on it are a little weird, but that's not really what is attracting me to the shell. It's all those zigzags. Oh, it's just kind of a weird shell, but I'm liking those zigzags. I like that weird zigzaggy Florida fighting conch. And another banded tulip. Seems to be a lot of those orange ones today. So another orange banded tulip. And another, yep. It's your arcs. A little piece of a sand dollar. Ooh. And right by that sand dollar was a broad rib cardita, not a turkey wing. This, I believe, is a northern quahog. We typically only really have the southern quahogs, but the southern quahogs don't have the purple. So I'm thinking that's a northern quahog. We kind of have both down here. What else? Oh, a turkey wing, also known as a zigzag arc. That's a really nice looking turkey wing. 
Yep, so a zigzag arc. Very nice. Oh, a little calico scallop. And another, oh, that one's broken. That one too. So yeah, it's a little slim, right? Another calico clam. <gasps> what are you doing here? Well, look at that. That's a giant bittersweet clam. What? So yeah, that I typically do not find over here on the West Coast. That's something I would typically expect to find on the East Coast. Well, that's pretty fun. All right, the glass, I'm not exactly going to classify as fun, especially since it's normally nothing really good. Like, we don't get the good sea glass over here every once in a while. But most of the time, it's just garbage, and I just make sure it comes off the beach. <gasps> oh, man, you are pretty. So that's a perfect Florida fighting cock. It's got a gorgeous stromboid notch. I mean, look and that those notches and that's where the eyeballs come out i think that that's kind of neat it's a beautiful color love that orange and that just delicate yellow mm-hmm beautiful oh you're so pretty too so you are a cut ribbed arc so like the turkey wing it's an, also an arc kind of all they're all kind of related beautiful cut ribbed arc and then the scallops, a couple of those calico scallops. Another, they come in so many different colors. I really like the orange ones. Lots and lots of pink, sometimes white, sometimes purple. I mean, some of the colors can really be spectacular. Very bright. I always tell people, if you like scallops, go over to Sanibel. Now, for you shell aficionados, you know what that is. It is a piece of a genomia. So that's kind of exciting. I keep all the little pieces I found. I have never found a genomia. I have not even found like anything really much bigger than that. So that is still one of my bucket list shells. But I love the hunt. The hunt is what's so fun. So I don't mind that there's still shells out there that I haven't found yet. That is fantastic. So that is a little horse conch. They do, sometimes they'll be yellow, sometimes they'll be orange. I love the bright orange ones. And then if you want to see an adult, this is what they grow up to be. So those little tiny shells are gonna grow up to be this big old horse cock, if it's lucky. Now, I'm not having a problem shelling in the water. Again, the only problem is the lack of shells. So at this point though, I am gonna turn around and march back to Blind Pass, but I'm going to be quiet and let you enjoy some beach time. And this is a rough scallop. And it's called that because its texture is actually rough. This one looks, eh, it's not terribly rough, but at least it has a little bit, a little bit of that roughness to it. And then this again with the barnacles again. So these critters, uh, yep, yeah, they decided to set up camp on this shell. I guess they don't. I mean, it's not like we have a whole lot of rocks and stuff down here. You know, the boats and the, a lot of the marinas, barnacles are just cover everything. A Florida prickly cockle. Oh, it's so pretty. It's kind of light. So the interior is kind of light. The top color is kind of light. And a buttercup lucine. Oh, it's quite buttery. Very nice Florida prickly cockle and a buttercup lucine. And I guess they had reached kind of the buttercup lucine section. Whoa, they're so pretty. So there's a couple different kind of lucines. The one that I tend to find the most is the buttercup lucine. A turkey wing. Mm, been here a minute. Yeah, it's been here for a little while. What about you? Spiny jewel box. You got some decent spikes going on there. Yeah, a lovely spiny jewel box. Oh, a crown conch. Color 
looks fantastic on that shell. All right, so it's not quite spiky. Wow, the color though. So that is a crown conch. Very, very nice looking shell. Amongst all the other common things, we're looking for something just a little exciting. Lightning welts, they're kind of exciting, right? Oh, so pretty. So that is one of those shells that can get quite large. It's difficult to find the big ones, but it does happen. This, I really don't think it's a calico scallop. I know it kind of looks like one. What do you think? Leave me a comment below. I don't know. I was thinking maybe a nucleus scallop, but apparently those are really only on the East Coast. What did I spy? Did I spy my little friend again? Is that that same little guy that I picked up earlier? No, no, it's not. That other one was dark with little white spots. That has more stripes on it. So that is not the same little guy. It is a different little guy. Either way, they both stay at the beach. Okay, another Cinctura hunteria, also known as the banded tulip. You know, that's a decent shell for here. You go a little south of here, you find a lot of them. Ooh. Oh, I want to chase that scallop. Oh, it's so pretty. So that's just a calico scallop, but the coloring just happens to be spectacular. Very nice. All right, so there are, <laughs> there are some shells here. This, Cinnabelle's making me work. I know it was really great to me the minute I showed up, and then after that, it's really making me work. Oh, a horse conch. What my mind sees when I see it rolling around in the water is not the same as it is when I pick it up. And that's fine, because I have this fantastic horse conch in my shell bag. So I'm not gonna worry about the one that's a little bit broken up. I'll just leave that here at the beach. So the shelling is a little slim today. It's a little slow, but you know what? I did not sweat at all. It was only got a high of like 71 degrees, which was nice. And again, with these barnacles, I don't know if there was just a massive spawning event. I don't know, but this is again, another shell just completely encrusted with live barnacles. And that's why I talk about them. If I see the volcano and there's nothing in it, I will take it. But when there's little critters in there, I leave it at the beach. So those are actually the slipper shell is on the fighting conch. The barnacles are on the slipper shell. It's a whole beach slumber party. But that gorgeous calico scallop, yep, all on its own. Absolutely beautiful. Now, just in case you forgot, I did find a horse conch today. So I'm experiencing that wonderful feeling if you've ever had it, like you're hunting for something and you found it and you just kind of buzz for a while. So I'm still buzzing from that horse conch find. And this is a lady in waiting Venus clam shell. Very long name. It is not an Imperial Venus. Still pretty. They kind of look similar, kind of, sort of, but that is a lady in waiting Venus clam. Wow. And that's like the biggest Florida cone I've ever seen. All right, maybe not the biggest one, but that's a big old Florida cone, the hard knock life shell, because they're always like half beat up. All right, we got a calico scallop, beautiful. Another one. Yep, gorgeous. And yep, we'll hold on to that one too. Do another quick scan. Anything gonna pop out at me? Anything calling my name? What about you, Chestnut Turban? Yep, I heard you. Not to worry, you will come home with me. And this bay scallop was just kind of faded. They're always oh, just so pretty. So it just, it's kind of a weird color, but it's so pretty. So that's a bay scallop. And I'm telling you today, I had never covered so much beach so quickly. And again, it's just because there wasn't a lot of shells here. Normally I creep along, but there just wasn't much here. Now you could have sat on a pile and combed through it and probably had yourself a fabulous time. You could do what I did. And I just like to cover as much beach as possible, thereby increasing my chances of seeing things and possibly finding things as well. Does it always work out? Nah, I do okay. At the end of the day, I really just want to have a nice experience at the beach. I just want to experience something. 
So that's why I come. See what we can experience. And I will tell you, if this were high tide, my experience would probably be a lot tougher. I would be up trying to get through all those twisted trees and whatnot. Finally, an apple murex. Woohoo, it's a nice one too. So we got ourselves one apple murex. Oh, okay, so we're back here at Blind Pass. There used to be a fence in that area. And there used to be a couple of houses here. The Mad Hatter used to be here. Oh, I loved walking past this and just kind of admiring the homes and they're gone. Hurricane Ian kind of did them in. So that's kind of sad. Could you imagine just waking up here and just kind of strolling 50 yards and going shelling? Oh, that must have been fun. It must have been fun. So we're back here at Blind Pass. I'm still buzzing from my shell. It was a nice day. I would have liked to have had more different, you know, shells to pick up, but it is what it is. Here's another apple murex, okay? So now we have two. We have two apple murex shells. And it has a little bit of beach stuff, but yep, on a day like today, it's gorgeous. And then here, another little banded tulip. So I probably could have stayed here again, sat on that shell pile. I would have got my horse conch, but I went for a lovely walk. So Blind Pass gave me a great day. It gave me this awesome shell. Thank you, thank you so very much, Blind Pass. I was absolutely thinking I was lucky I picked this beach. There was many beaches I could have ended up, but I'm really happy that this is the beach that I walked on today. So I did manage to find a little bit of garbage, 10.95 ounces. So in total, all the garbage I've removed off the beach, almost 41 pounds of garbage. And then the horse conch. We are gonna clean it up at the very, very end because the periostricum, that brown stuff, it's so thick, it's just flaking off. So I'm going to remove it. But let's look at a couple of the other shells I found. So I did get a couple of those calico clams, the one spiny jewel box, the uh, northern quahog. So I got two of those yellow prickly cockles, a coquina, a Florida prickly cockle, some of those common augers, whole bunch of scallops mostly calico scallops. I see a base scallop in there. That corrugated jewel box, the buttercup leucines. I did grab a couple of those kitten paws, the two apple murex, the banded tulips, those turkey wings, the cut ribbed arc, the giant bittersweet, which was cool, the crown conch, that big Florida cone, the colorful moon snail, the Florida uh, fighting conchs, lady in waiting Venus clam, the two chestnut turbans, the one lightning whelk, those two little horse conchs. They're really great, but honestly for me, yeah, I was buzzing over that Big, big horse conch, that was awesome. So what does that horse conch look like once I've removed all that periostricum? Well, let's find out. So ta-da, so it's about two weeks, half bleach, half water, all that periostricum off. Look at how broken, but that makes it, to me, I just think it makes it even more amazing because that animal had to repair itself. And when you look at it from the inside, it's perfect. It's perfect, and I like that side better. Oh, I just think it, it was just, what a fun day. And just to show up at the beach and this thing rolls up at my feet, I probably could spend a little more time cleaning it up, which I probably will. But holy cow, that was really fun. And thank you so much for allowing me to share this with you and for coming along with me every week. Patreons, thank you so much for supporting me. I would not be able to do this without you. So thank you so much. And new Patreons, welcome. Welcome aboard. I hope we spend many glorious hours on the beach together. Next week, we're headed to Kais. I haven't been there yet. So normally I would tell you how awesome it's going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be awesome. So we'll have to see next Sunday. Until then, I hope you have yourself a great week.